Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you, Halloween, October 31st, 2022. It's approximately 500 days since I've done this before. But here we are, we're back. Um, back trading the conventional markets after a little hiatus. Uh, managing some digital stuff for some people in the Middle East which turned out to be a bit of a waste of time um, but such is life I'll get into that story some other day but not today um, let's just go over these markets talk about what we're gonna do this week today and this week and see what we think is happening out here a lot of rates uh, a lot of central bank rate action this week we got Aussie rates tomorrow, FOMC Wednesday, Sterling on Thursday. Um, so today looks like we're going to range around a bit and we're going to just sit tight. Probably not trade a lot today. It looks like a very stale market uh, while we wait for to get these rate announcements out of the way. Let's look at U.S. 10-year here. This seems to be driving the bus you saw this turn bar here last week we talked about it last Friday um, and you know that was the high of 432 this is dollar Swiss up at 101.80 and then bang turned bang 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 down to 390 it's you know it's 40 40 basis points but now we're consolidating a bit and this thing has to make a decision right and a lot of this is going to depend on inflation um, and strength of the economy numbers in the US so keeping an eye on this as we just flop around in the middle of this new range let's call it 435 390 408 is this point here um, you could say that's a bit of a fulcrum here. I would say above 408. I'm worried about the top side, but as long as we're down below 408, I think we got further downside to go. As yields go lower, um, the dollar seem, tends to weaken. As yields go higher, the dollar tends to strengthen. This is a very simplistic um, way of looking at things, but it is one of the main drivers, so I, I want to point it out. Let's look at stocks here, not doing anything after that big crazy throbbing green bar on um, on Friday here's your 200 day 4109 it's like oddly close to that I mean we're seven percent from that um, we're supposed to be having the biggest bear market ever but of course we're in the seasonal period there are reasons for this to go up as well as it goes down um, if the Fed changes course which I don't think they're going to do um, but if they do um, this can remain buoyant I don't think it's gonna rocket ship anywhere but it can remain buoyant so nothing to do in stocks today just want to point out the 200 day which is the big you know below the 200 day you're bearish above the 200 day you're bullish again I don't want to oversimplify things but it's one of the things that we all we all look at um, Nazi gonna be the same slightly less bullish just because of what happened at Amazon and some of the tech stocks let's go to oil um, my guys are all bullish oil they've just been so bullish 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 oil to 200 now we're just kind of stuck here let's call it uh, 80 90 um, and I don't really know what to do with this I'm not really trading it much but this is something we need to watch and we also just need to watch it because of sort of the global global political crisis that's going on with Russia and Ukraine and how this is going to affect um, you know households this winter uh, in Europe the price of nat gas and the price of oil are just something to watch and maybe trade extremes um, but the smart guys that I know all think this is gonna go way the fuck higher so I uh, just I don't know I'll mention that because I don't even know why I would mention that but 200 days at 97 bucks so it's almost at a hundred we're really in the middle of nowhere here in oil so not much to do let's go to currencies uh, we got Aussie rates tomorrow Aussie felt a little bit overextended 
on Friday, we took a nibble at 64.05. It was immediately 10 points lower. It was kind of funny. Um, as I put that on Twitter, I was like, oh, this looks cheap around 64.05. Whoops, 90 given. Um, again, we're not doing much here. We've been down to 98 today, up to 28. No real conviction on this trade. We'll see. What, we'll see what stocks do. We'll see what the U.S. rates do. We obviously have Aussie rates tomorrow, and Low is speaking, the head of uh, the RBA. So you keep this super tight now. Uh, if you're long Aussie, no real conviction in it. We're obviously not going to go into rates with a position. So maybe just sort of scam some pips and and move on. Euro not doing anything. This is the hourly chart. Looks like we're probably going to touch. Um, Touch this support area here today, 98, 98. Uh, probably a good area to scoop up some euros, um, especially if you think the Fed is going to change course and be less hawkish. If that's your thought pattern, you do want to buy some euros. Cables being driven by euro sterling. Huge flows in euro sterling um, on Friday. So that was one of the reasons that euro kept being offered and cable kept being bid this is the euro sterling chart you can see four big red days and now we're at this crucial support there's a head and shoulders here there's a whole lot of shit going on in euro sterling i have no idea why i don't um can't think of any reason you'd want to buy sterling against anything long term right now it's it's a total mess total clusterfuck in england still um, but this pattern is probably going to at least um, be tested, right? So if you think here's your neckline, that's terrible. Um, should be extended, you muppet. this is going to get tested right and if this does technically break and do what it's supposed to do I mean it's just got some major fucking downside so careful careful on um, dollar driven sterling moves right so even if euro is going left the cable might go right if euro sterling continues to drive so just something to watch today dollar yen bullish going into the FOMC we have the BOJ here um, they came in at 151.75, slammed it down to 146. Now we're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I would just stay away from dollar yen for now. I think dollar Swiss is going lower. Um, obviously, as you all know, I live in Switzerland, so I have some biases here, but things are fine in Switzerland. There's no panic. There's no changes rates are not going through the roof they are marginally higher but a mortgage here in switzerland is still two percent um used to be one and a half percent for a 10-year mortgage now it's two wages are going higher asset prices are going higher um as usual switzerland is going to be just fine so we look for places to sell dollar swiss just as a rule especially when we get um stretched and so today we may try and uh, be the same trade as trying to buy euros at 99 cents. Maybe sell dollar Swiss around 1.00, 1.00.30. Euro Swiss, not doing much. Coming back to normalcy, right? 94 cents is way too low. Even parities is too low. Euro Swiss is going to settle itself around 105, is my guess. Um, we don't trade much Euro Swiss. Uh, it never really makes sense to buy Euros <laughs> against the Swiss franc, but this is all overdone down here, and this is Ukraine and Russian bullshit. So we're just kind of rewriting the ship. The 200 days, 1.0055. Dollar CAD is a chart that we really like. Uh, 135, we'll call it 135, the figure. Um, we're looking forward to that trade. It's 136.20 now. This is not going to happen today. Could happen tomorrow if the FOC, FOMC is 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 dovish. Um, keep an eye on this level, just from a technical perspective. It's uh, excellent level. 
Urien not doing much. By the way, these Bollingers are they're pretty they're custom, right? So you can see it's two and a half sigma. This is thirty four days. This system was um, made for crypto. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it does it does kind of work in FX. Um, I don't really trade it too often in FX, but the stretch marks uh, begin up at 149, 90, 150. So if you see these little stretchy bits up here, cross yen, sterling yen as well, it's far, but 174, yeah. Those are probably good sell points. Dollars are. I feel like deja vu here. Am I going to just sell South Africa down the river? Not really. Um, I need to get my feet wet a little bit before I start punching around dollars are again. Um, obviously up here at 1820. Rates in South Africa, I believe, are 10%. I wonder if they still have water. I haven't been following it as closely as I used to. This will be interesting for RBA, Euro Aussie. Um, this could easily turn, start heading lower. Keep an eye on this um, 154.07. Nothing for today. Swiss yen, nobody cares. Euro sterling, we talked about. Kiwi, nobody really cares. Two big and decisive days. Uh, this could go either way. Downside 57.80. Interesting top side 58.75. CAD Swiss, don't care. Euro Norway, again, I'm going to have to like spend some more time getting used to this price action before I like plunge into that. Euro CAD, not really doing much. Dollar Max, it's like a Sinaloa cartel trade or something, right? Uh, how many dollars are they putting through the border? Um, I watched that Netflix Dirty Money series. I thought that was fascinating and fun. And finance is a fabulous, fabulously moral albatross. Um, not much going on, Dollar Max. Again, also Dollar Turkey, not doing anything. Why you would trade that um, only if you're forced to. Let's go to crypto. Um, spent a lot of time trading crypto. I don't trade Bitcoin, but here's the Bitcoin chart. Uh, I don't like Bitcoin. I do like the infrastructure uh, plays in crypto, which is Ethereum, Solana, Matic, Phantom, Cardano, Near. Um, these are where the businesses are built, and these are the building blocks for the future of finance. So I do trade this f a lot. We're, we're long Ethereum, we're long Solana. Matic, we're also long. Matic's through the 200 day. Um, this will be driven by FOMC this week, so we're not excessively long. We're not balls to the wall long, but we're trading this on the long side. Looks like we got a little bit of left hand side action today, a little sideways left hand side action going into this. These are the stretch marks up here 36 bucks in Solana. And what? Uh, and just to be super clear, we you know we have a system here where below the 200-day, um, we're bearish, but still core long. 30% um, of the notional that we want to be long below the 200-day, above the 200-day, we're 100% long. We stake these coins, so we get a 7% yield on this. I won't get into this right now, um, and then. We trade an intraday book, so when you touch these top bits, you sell and you try and make 10%. And every time you make 10% um, of the notional, you know it. It's 1% um, to the NAV. So anyway, it's a bunch of it's a rules based, systematic, works pretty well. Um, we like it; it's kind of fun. So I will be talking about crypto here. Um, and again, mainly, I will be talking about what you call the proof-of-stake coins. Again, Ethereum, Solana, Matic, Phantom, Cardano, which I don't like, Near, which is kind of fun, Stellar, they lied to me, um, <laughs> won't get into that, um, and Avex, uh, which is a cool sort of banker-driven protocol. Um, so, anyway... 
like a lot of the currencies, we're pretty sidelined today um, going into FOMC, so we'll be keeping it pretty quiet. I guess the main point is, look, I'm trying to record this. I'm trying to make this work. We'll see what happens, and I will uh, close it out there and see you all tomorrow. Ciao.